What was the biggest judgment error about you? Uh, my rape conviction. I, I know that's, that's a big scar, right? Yeah. Well, looking forward, what in your life would you like to be more than only just um, the toughest former world champ heavyweight? In this part of my life, I'm just looking forward to watching my kids grow. And when I look at my kids um, embarking on a scholastic um, career, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm only a ninth grade dropout. You know, to me, it may not mean nothing to other people. To me, that's um, I feel um, really prideful when I see my children are able to accomplish that. Something, you know, and I'm just a, I don't know, I'm just a guy from the streets. I'm a street guy, never had a chance, and I'm just so happy that I can give them opportunities that I could never have. The most beautiful chapters in the book are especially about your relationship with Cus D'Amato. I'm a former coach, so what interesting me, he made from you a really a fighting machine. It was not interesting only, you say, it's not uh, only to win, but you also want to fight to hurt people. In which way that influenced your life after? Because Gus D'Amato, he died quite early, and then you stood alone. In which way you, you were a fighting machine and to go I have through? To, I have to admit to you that that wasn't good for my personal life. You know, um, Gus wasn't around long enough to teach me how to channel that. If you know what I'm saying, he didn't teach me how to channel it. Hey, Mike, outside the ring, we can't be that way. We have to conduct ourselves. I just thought that was my persona. I believed everybody had to talk to me a certain way. I, you know, it was just really ridiculous, really ego-driven. And um, it was truly about being um, the best fighter that God created. Did you have ever wanted to be a role model if you ever considered the, the possibility, maybe the responsibility to become one? Hey, I'm a role model if I want to or not. You know, there's kids from all over the world that come up to me and they saw my show on HBO on the Speed of Truth and everybody's been profo profoundly um, affected by it. Um, and I'm just very grateful for that as well. So this, is, this puts me in, um, in a chance to embark on a new lifestyle, so to speak. I'm not perfect, you know, anything can happen, you know. I'm just living life one day at a time like everyone else. Every day is not necessarily the same day. I still have a different question for you. I see a lot on television with pigeons. You know we are from Belgium here. <laughs> They're the world and, champions. And pigeon Belgium country. is the country. Yeah. yeah. Belgium is the country of pigeon racing. And when I read your book, I can see that your first fight was against Gary Flowers. Because yeah, he killed one of yeah, he killed <laughs> he, he killed one of your, your your pigeons, and then your pigeons are state status symbols not only in the Bronx, for example, or Brooklyn, but you also went in 2005 to Russia. Then you went for the, you, you seen the pigeons also at the Russian mafia, and in your book there is also a, a very beautiful chapter going that you say pigeons aren't like women. You need 500 when you lose one, there are some left. <laughs> what? <laughs> But where the world is. <laughs> How, from, from, <laughs> from where comes your love for the pigeons? Tell me once. <laughs> the love for the wife we know, but... It's not something you're going to pick up at 15 or 16 years old. This is something that I have to start when you're 10 or 6 years old. And I've been doing it all my life. And it, and it just doesn't stop. It's just what I do. It's just, no matter where I'm at, I have to have birds. It's just what I do. It's just something that's just... It's, it's bigger than boxing to me. It's just... When I'm an old man, I'm, if I live to be an old man, I'm 80 years old, I'm going to have pigeons. I'm not going to be looking at boxing movies or thinking about boxing, I'm going to have pigeons. But okay. so I can you invite to come over here because there's big money here in pigeons. We all know Belgium is the best in the world. We all know that. You don't got to tell us that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your pigeons are more famous than your chocolates with the pigeon guys. <laughs> and the beer, and the beer. Nah, the, the, the birds, the birds. <laughs>